All right, welcome back guys. Another mindset video for you. And for this lesson, we're going to talk about stress management and coping behavior. And this is the foundation, kind of the underlying, you know, if you think of, we've all seen those pictures of an iceberg, right? Where you have like the 2% out the top and then this massive thing underneath. This is a lot like that. Right now, you're on the Titanic and you keep following diet and exercise tips, that tiny little iceberg, and you keep hitting the iceberg and sinking and getting frustrated over and over again. Just like I did, just like everyone does when they start following a path like this. And stress management, mental is the whole space under here, under the water, but stress management makes up the majority of it. And the reason that this is so important is until you learn to address, be aware of, and manage your stress appropriately, you will never have control over your behaviors, no matter how good your discipline is. Discipline matters, but unless it goes hand in hand with stress management, there is a point where no amount of discipline is going to do it because you're not going to be acting consciously. So let's get into it. We'll start as we always do with a little bit of a story. So for me, when I started, you already know, I tried everything. I tried all these different things. I was following these different programs. I was getting stronger. You know, I was getting really, really strong. I was seeing great muscle progress, uh, getting much, much stronger, which was all fantastic. But I was never achieving the leanness that I really wanted to achieve year after year after year, no matter how much I learned and how much I tried. And it got to a point where I had tried all these different diets. I had tried paleo. I had tried keto. I tried if it fits your macros. I tried carb cycling, uh, cycling, calorie cycling, all these different things. And none of it was working. And the reason it was working, wasn't working, was first because I didn't have enough discipline. But then once that was addressed, the other reason that it wasn't working, and this was something that I didn't know on a conscious level, and that was probably undermining me for like somewhere between five and 10 years. I don't know exactly when, but at some point I did become aware of it. And then when I worked with a guy named Tommy Caldwell, you should look him up. You should definitely buy his book, Heavy Brain. I became very aware of it. And so basically the way that this works is pretty simple and pretty straightforward. Number one, I day to day am stressed a lot because I've got all these messages. I've got all these emails, you know, phones are going off. I'm driving in traffic in a metal box, flying around at hundred kilometers an hour and hoping someone else doesn't smash into me. Right now, the coronavirus is, you know, maybe anywhere outside. I don't want to catch it. I don't want to give it to my family, everything like that. We have all these stresses in all these different forms. We have work stress. Our bodies are stressed because we're sitting all the time. We're stressed because we're getting all this light in our eyes in the evening. I could go on and on forever, and I'm probably stressing you out right now. But I was stressed chronically, and I wasn't aware of it. And chances are you are too, because honestly, like 90 plus percent of us are stressed in this modern environment every single day. So I was stressed all the time. I was following all these diets. I was following these exercise plans. I was pushing myself. And then I would still find myself sitting down in front of the TV and just demolishing a bag of chips. And now I'm not going to look at you and be like, look, I've never done this ever again since I found out about this. Obviously I did, but this used to be something very frequent. And now it's at the point where it's under control. And if I'm doing it, it's because I'm actually choosing to do it for other reasons. You know, maybe I'm with a bunch of people and I want to share in it. Maybe I've been working really hard and I know that I deserve it. But I'm at a point now where when I'm doing it, I'm not doing it and then feeling guilty after because I just did something that was out of my control. I'm doing it consciously. I'm enjoying it. I love a bag of chips as much as anybody. You know, I'm a fat kid at heart. Let's be real here. But I'm not feeling the guilt after because I'm doing it consciously and I'm doing it with like an actual I'm actually making the decision and I thought I was making the decision before I just thought that it was really really hard to resist um, but that I would really try and I thought you know maybe I'm just doing this because you know I'm really disciplined with rugby I'm disciplined with jiu-jitsu I developed discipline in all these other areas of life where I could push myself to throw up when I'm working out I could go so hard that I'd throw up I could push myself you know in jiu-jitsu matches and everything like that a lot of the time I was less skilled and I would win just on willpower. So I knew that willpower and discipline wasn't the problem anymore, but I was still not doing the behaviors. So I thought that I was just choosing to do it because I just really enjoyed those things. And when I look back, I was kind of lying to myself to protect myself because if you admit that you're actually out of control, then, you know, that feels terrible. 
Um, you know, the, the external world is very chaotic, but we like to think that we have at least a sense of control over ourselves and our own decision making. But the reason that I actually didn't, even though I thought I did, was because I wasn't acknowledging my stress and I wasn't coping with it properly. And what happens is if you don't cope with stress consciously, you seek unconscious ways to deal with it instead. And those ways might be healthy. They might not. For most of us, they're not. For me, it certainly wasn't. Like when I was in university, you know, I was doing different things all the time to cope with stress. You're having drinks with friends, you're smoking weed way too much. These are things that I did. These were things that I was around, grew up around, um, you know, in high school and in university. And so at first you start off, you're just going to parties and having fun and everything like that. But what these do is they actually are effective for dealing with stress in the short term. If you've ever been super stressed and you came home and you had a beer or you smoked a joint with a buddy or something like that, after you do that, right away, you're not stressed, you're relaxed, you do actually feel kind of a transition, you know, it takes the edge off the day is what people would say around me, um, you know, other people who are indulging in the same negative behaviors, or it makes you feel like a transition from work life to relaxing life, you know, people think of it like that. And what ended, uh, ended up happening is I was really stressed from all this, you know, schoolwork, and trying to push myself to achieve all these different goals and everything like that, traffic, all these different things. And then I'd come home and I thought I was just having fun with my friends. Again, this goes back to the bag of chips analogy. And I thought that I was just choosing to do this. And then when I became aware of how stress actually affects our coping behaviors, I became aware that I was doing all of these different things, not for fun, not because it was going to be the best way to spend my night, but because I was actually finding ways to deal with my stress unconsciously. And they were all negative, you know, it was smoking weed, it was having drinks, it was eating bags of chips, you know, overeating, watching Netflix for hours, things that in the long run were actually going to harm me and that were taking me away from where I wanted to be and what I wanted to be and who I wanted to be. So I was doing all these things, I was dealing with all this stress. And when I became aware that I was doing this, I started to develop other skills, you know, I'd already messed around a little bit with meditation, but Instead of stress eating or drinking or smoking, you replace it with stress meditating, you know, stress picking up the phone and actually talking to a friend and explaining what's going on, stress working out. You start to replace it with these healthy ways of coping, going for walks, you know, just putting on your headphones, putting on a podcast and going for a long walk. Things that would diffuse the stress, but that weren't actually going to harm me or take away from my goals and the things that I was pursuing. And so as I learned slowly over time i'll be honest this process probably took two or three years to get to a point where i really feel like i have some sense of mastery over it and i'm not talking mastery like perfection i definitely don't always cope with stress in the best ways but now it's at like the point where it's 80 or 90 percent and i'm also aware of it and when i slip up i know what's happening and so as i developed those skills i finally started to be able to have control over my eating behavior and now I'm at a point where I actually do have a sense of autonomy over how I'm eating in the evenings. For me, it was always in the evenings when the day was done. It was never in the morning. I never woke up and felt like I had to crush a bag of chips. And then now if I do slip up, I'm aware of it. And I know that I am not dealing with my stress appropriately. And I can get back on track to actually do that. And until you acknowledge that stress is driving your behavior, you know, stress is the reason that you're spending hours on Instagram. It's the reason that you're watching Netflix all night. It's the reason that you're eating that bag of chips, having that beer, smoking, whatever it is. Until you acknowledge it, just like until I acknowledged it, you will never have full control over your behavior because if you don't consciously deal with stress, your body will just automatically go to whatever you've done the most times as the path of least resistance. And the reason that we do all those negative things is even though they hurt us in the long run, they work in the short term and our brain doesn't really care. It's our lizard brain versus our conscious brain. And the lizard brain is quick, powerful, and impulsive. And what you can do is, as you develop the discipline and the habits around doing stress coping behaviors that are actually healthy, you can start to replace them until eventually the unconscious drive is going to be towards the healthier alternatives. But at the moment, just like I was, chances are that you're just reaching for the easiest thing that you've done the most times. And it's going to work in the short term, but you know deep down, just like I knew deep down, that you know, you're feeling like a failure, you're frustrated, you're feeling like you don't even have control over your own life. And learning how to cope with your stress in healthy ways is the fundamental key to unlock 
all of those other things that you want, like control over your diet, control over your exercise, better discipline, and then the body that you want, the leanness that you want, the height to waist ratio that you want, the physique that you want, the appearance that you want, and then all of the other areas of your life as well, like, you know, work and dating and all these other different aspects. So it all comes down to learning how to appropriately deal with your stress. Once you learn to do that, you can start to develop control over other areas of your life. But until you do, just like I did, you're going to be acting unconsciously. That lizard brain is going to take over and you're going to reach for that beer or that bag of chips or whatever it is. So takeaway message, you have to learn to deal with your stress. You have to have healthy coping mechanisms and you have to acknowledge that you are stressed because everyone is stressed right now in modern life. It's just how you deal with it. It's not if you're stressed. So I hope you enjoyed. If you only watch and take one lesson from all these videos home with you and really let it resonate and percolate and then act on it, let it be this one because this is the mass under the water of the iceberg that is learning how to control your diet and your exercise and eventually actually get the body that you want. So please take this one uh, as very, very important. You know, maybe watch it a couple times. Get Tommy's book, Heavy Brain. 